Well, uh, first, before I introduce this young, well, not even just young anymore, this grown man in front of me. Um, during the pandemic, just me thinking, waiting until, you know, things started opening back up and kind of resetting and restarting, I said that I was going to come back and do spotlights. And one that was kind of like uh, on my mind, I would tell you for the last like two months was, I want to spotlight the fathers in the scene and the younger ones, the older ones, you know, um, and just kind of get a little bit of um, history and conversation. So you were the first one I chose. <laughs> so introducing... Matter of fact, I want you to do it for the people out there that don't know who you are. All right. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am the legendary overall father of King James West. I know that's a lot to say, but yeah, that's who I am. Okay. So let's jump right into it. So first, James, tell me about you before Ballroom. Like growing up, we're in Baltimore, for those that don't know. Did you grow up in Baltimore? Yeah, so um, mm -hmm. I can just give you a quick background. So, um, and, and guys, just so you know, we're kind of just thunderstorming out there. So yes, we're going to make it work dogs. Um, so yeah, I am from Baltimore, Maryland, born, born and raised. Um, I grew up here, everything. I had, like I think, a pretty normal, good life. Um, I, I, like, I ate normal, I was fed. I like, had clothes on my back, I had a home around me. Um, I had family. Um, I came out to my mom when I was about like 14, uh, which was kind of early. It wasn't my plans, but you know, I guess God had other plans. Um, it was a little rough at first. Nowadays, me and my mom is like best of friends. It didn't take long, really, but um, it just took for her to understand my lifestyle. Um, we're the best of friends. Um, I have like two amazing parents in the scene. Um, let's, let's, not, let's not get to the that's not at the okay, scene yet. Okay, like, okay, okay. So, let, so let me let me let's backtrack a little bit. So did you always know that you were gay? Yeah, I've always known I was gay. So as long as I can remember, like I can remember um, a time sitting on a porch, but I couldn't go off. I was too young, mm -hmm. and thinking like, oh my god, this boy is cute. And, and at one point, it's funny. Um, I used to think that because you were gay, you were supposed to want to be a girl. So I used to think in my head like, I can't believe I'm like this. Like I didn't. I thought I was the only one. And um, I said, I can't believe I'm like this. I like. I wish I was just born a girl, so I didn't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about. The inner struggle. Being weird, yeah, mm -hmm. being weird to everybody until I realized, like, okay, so there's, like, plenty of gay men or men that think the way I think that money was the, like, gay men. It was men that think the way I think and still was comfortably, like, men. I, I'm, I'm comfortable with men. I just thought I was supposed to want to be a girl. I think that's the theme with all of us that are gay for the most part, um, that we feel like we are the only one mm -hmm. until we find out we're definitely not okay, the right. only one because I remember that same feeling growing up, like, why do I, why am I like this and being the only one thinking that I'm like this? Right, and, and that's, you only know what you know. And that, right. at that time, that was all I knew is that I think like this and I don't think nobody else does. So I'm like, I'm supposed to want to be a girl because I like boys. And when I realized I ain't had to, I was like, oh, okay, I can, I can get with this. Like me being me and liking him, okay? Like, so yeah. So being from uh, Baltimore, as you know, as we all know, Baltimore has a very, very rough reputation. Mm -hmm. So how was it for you growing up, you know, knowing that you would have an internal struggle being gay, and also growing up in the streets of Baltimore, per se? So um, I think, I don't think my experience was no worse than anybody else's. Like, I've had um, those situations of, like, being judged when I was younger. I think nowadays Baltimore is a lot better, but I was definitely judged when I was younger. Like, I went, I was at malls, and, like, I can remember some people hearing people say like this bag of it and I can hear you know I heard that kind of stuff I've been down to uh walking through downtown Baltimore and there's like groups of people down there just kind of waiting for somebody like me and uh, like fortunately I was never gay bashed um like at random like that but um I had friends once I like gave, gave my gay friends and stuff like that like we didn't kind of play with them like, you know we was you bother us now it's beef and it's war and that's how I was so I feel like um I hate to say it but I think the Baltimore trade is pretty trained like they, you don't have to worry about like being gay bashed or even pe really being judged. I, these days, gay is everywhere. Everybody has a gay member in their family and stuff like that. So like, um, or trans or something like that. So I feel like being gay bashed or even having to be judged is like, it's not even a thing anymore. It's funny you say that because your mother, well, I will we'll get into your uh, community mother will say. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew her, her former life as we know. And she was one of the reasons my first time we was friends why I ever came to Baltimore and that was uh, in 98. And when I came out here, I'll never forget it. They came and picked me up from the train station and she didn't live that far from at the time. So it was her, Mariah, and 
Randy. Stricker Randy Street. would. Hmm? Stricker Street? Is that what it's called? Stricker? Maybe. I can't, I can't really remember the street, but Randy was still, Randy McGlair, rest in peace, he was still alive. And they came and got us. And I remember, and it was my friend Lorenzo, who was also no longer with us. And we was walking, and I was the only one that looked like a boy out of the crew. Mm -hmm. So they was like, why are you with them Fs? You know, why are you with them Fs? And I was like, what? And then they started throwing bottles and stuff. And I'll never forget how Monique and them ran so fast. <laughs> and this is before cell phones and everything, for real, for real. You right, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to, like, go to a payphone to find out where they went. And then I had to find my way to the house. They left me. It was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> so that's one of my first... Baltimore experience. And then the second time I came to Baltimore, uh, Mariah came and got me from the train station. And as soon as we got off, the police searched all of us thinking that we was uh, smuggling drugs in. So yeah, Baltimore definitely had a, a stir reputation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so like I said, I don't have, I didn't have any like over the top experience um, mm -hmm. growing up gay in Baltimore. Um, my experience was pretty normal. Um, Thank God I didn't have to go through anything traumatic. And um, I'm, I'm like hoping and praying these days here in Baltimore and, and hopefully everywhere at some point nobody has to deal with those type of mm -hmm. things. Because um, they are traumatic and I have friends who went through some traumatic stuff. But everywhere. Yeah, for sure. So I'm so glad I didn't have to. So, okay, so you said 14. Okay, so you, you told your mom. Um, no, I friend. told her. I didn't believe in tell her. They, that's how it be as well sometimes. Yeah. You probably feel more comfortable with your aunt at the time. Yeah, she just made me think like, oh, it's okay. And then went to, to my mother off the next day for her birthday and told her. So, getting into it. Okay, so your uh, the process with your mom, that was a work in progress. So, when did James encounter the gay scene or was aware of the gay scene? So, I um at that time, like, the chat line was a thing. And, like, the chat line was like... You had two different types of people in the chat line. You had one that was on there to key and find girlfriends and just like be in chat rooms. And you had one that was on there looking for a link up. Um, I was one of those people that was on there, like I wanted to key. I met a guy named Sam. Um, Sam was my best friend. And we like talked on the phone, believe it or not, me and Sam talked on the phone for a couple months as friends before we even met. And like when we met, he had already told me, like, well, when we talked on the phone, he's like, yeah, I know these um, these uh, girls that be downtown, they go to Vines, like, you ever been to Vines? I'm like, no, nah, I've never been to Vines. Eventually, he, like... And how old were you then? I was, like, 15. 15, okay. Like, yeah, like, maybe, like, 15. Um, and we, had like, at one point had met for the first time. Like you said, at that time, cell phones was not a thing. Mm -hmm. So I was able to just, like, look, this is where we're going to meet, blah, blah, blah. We met, and I said, no, I'm like, oh, my God, hi, best friend. So, like, we had already had a connection, so we just, we clinged, and, like, we caught the bus downtown for the first time. I had, like, actually, we didn't even go to Buns. We went to a parade, and, like, I had seen, like, the ballroom girls, but I didn't know who they was because YouTube wasn't even a thing at this time, and, like, um, so what year are we talking about right here? Just, like, 2005. Okay, so at the like, beginning of all that. Yeah, right. like, 2005, um, and, like, I had seen all these people at the parade, and he had already had a relationship with, like, maybe one or two people out there. So I was just easily introduced to everybody. Like, this is James, blah, blah, blah. They, so I had, um, whatever, I'll get to that later. But I was introduced to everybody. And like, everybody took on to me really quickly and really easily, which was dope. And I felt like, oh my God, bitch, I'm like out here and I can be comfortable. Like, I'm not like, I don't have to act a little more masculine than what I really feel. I was just able to be myself. And that was like, so you felt a different feeling as soon as you encountered those people? Yes, like, cause they were so welcoming to me. So like, and then, Knowing what I know now, like, those people were mean. Like, they were the mean girls. So, like, to know that they were so welcoming to me was, like, crazy to me. And, um... But also, you gotta look at it. You were the baby to them, too. I was a baby. I right. was definitely a baby. Um, this is my first time being around, like, this many gay people. Definitely able to be myself. So, it's weird because, at this point, I know I'm gay. And, like, I haven't told many other people that I'm gay. So, it's like, me being in a set with a bunch of gay people in a parade where there is straight people. So, at this point, I'm, like, showing the world that I'm gay. Mm -hmm. And that was, like, weird to me. But it also felt kind of good because, at the same time, I didn't see anybody I knew. So, I felt, like, you know, I felt comfortable. But, um, I, my, like, that was, I met them. And those people still, to this day, are my family. Like, the, the Donikas, well, Crash Ebony, mm -hmm. Trouble Ebony, um. Beyonce at the time, but Daryl. Okay, so those are the initial gay people that you Yeah, like, and they're right. still around. They're still my family. I still love them. We still communicate. We still get so happy when we see each other. So, like, that's it's, it, that feels good to me to know that I'm still with the same people. To be honest, one thing I've always admired about Baltimore, though, is the fact that, you know, it's a lot of people, but it's still a small community. Mm -hmm. And pretty much everybody that knows you, everybody kind of knows each other mm -hmm. in the community. Like, it's always been like that. So, like, for example... They could battle down at the ball at Paradox or Buns, but then go and 
go out to eat together and chill together because kind of everybody knows everybody in Baltimore because right. of the way the community is set up. Right. And I always like that about Baltimore. Yeah, for sure. So, really small. how did you get introduced? Even you named some ballroom names, but how did you get introduced to actual ballroom? Okay, so I knew um, once I met those people and I went to Buns for the first time, I knew that Vogan was a thing, but I still wasn't sure that ballroom was actually a thing. Like I didn't know there was even nothing past Vogan. So like I'm like I went to Buns for the first time and I see them like Vogan and you know doing their stuff, but I didn't. That was the only thing I'm assuming that interests me enough for me to notice it. Um, it wasn't until I met Monique that I realized like this is actually a thing outside of Baltimore. Like this is a whole thing, and like she's the first person that put me on an actual floor. Like I didn't know how to vote. I had never walked the ball before, and she put me in her grand march for her bloodline ball. And um, wait, wait. So real quick for the viewers so they know, Monique is Monique originally was a Revlon for years. Mm -hmm. Then went to the House of Khan and now in West and legendary for film crew performing. Icon. I, well, iconic overall for ballroom, but as far as le for, for legendary for film crew performance. Right. So tell us what attracted Monique to you. So um, I, I'll tell you what she said to me. So I seen Monique one time. We was like we used to go to this like hangouts by um, near North Avenue, and she seen me with them and. She had called, like, we had went back to one of my friends' houses, it was like maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, and she had called one of, she called Crash Phone and asked to speak to me. So when they gave me the phone, they like, this Mother Mo, you know, they used to call her Mother Mo. They never called her Monique. She was always Mother Mo. So they're like, Mother Mo wants to speak to you. I'm like, you want to speak to me? And she's like, yeah. At, they're like, at this point, I had never even had a conversation with her. So I get on the phone, she's like, how you doing? I'm like, I'm fine. So we, long story short, she told me she wanted to be my mom. Um, so there was something about you that she seen. Yeah, she said, I, I felt, she said when she first seen me, she felt a different vibe, and she felt like, she needed to put her hands around me. And I honestly feel like that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because um, the people I was with, they wasn't making the best decisions in the world. And I don't like, still love them the same, but I feel like I would have experienced a lot more um, trauma than I had had I not met me. Um, at that point, like we cleaned so fast. Um, we cleaned very, very fast. I was like with her every single day. like, And once I got to like an age where she felt like, okay, James, enough is enough. Like, you had fun, now let's kind of focus on life. Um, her and my, my dad, BJ, kind of, like, went together without even having conversations, kind of just, like, like blended together to help me make sure I was making better decisions in my life, um, which is how I got to where I am now. It's like, I own my house. I own my car now. Um, I have a good job. I have so many, like, things that I want to do myself long term. And, um, like, I have goals. And... They play a big part in that. They, they kept me focused even while letting me have fun. And, um, Wait, so piggybacking off that real quick. So knowing now what you know, being this long in the scene and knowing then, did you even realize how important it was you having that maternal figure at the time in the community? Did you? I, I didn't realize that. Um, I didn't realize that. I didn't sleep on it either because I felt like our, our relationships were so authentic. And um, just like the way I've always dealt with them, like I've, I promise you, like, had I not maybe looked a tad bit older, people would assume those, those are my real parents. Um, because they've been such, like, so, like, I, I don't know. They've just been Hands such an important you. factor. Yes, yeah, it's such an important factor in my life. So, like, that's why I, I always felt like our relationships was, was going to get me a long way because they, like, the way they've always dealt with me. I've never had any uncomfortable situations with them. Um, like I, I have a certain level of respect where I don't even talk to them a certain kind of way, certain words I don't use with them and like, and, and vice versa. So because like, you really view them as your parents. I do. I really do. So, um, I didn't realize how, how important it was, but I'm glad it happened the way it did. Um, cause I feel like they kept me out of a lot of trouble. 